Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. Why some black Americans dislike their country. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. The cold truth is African Americans have it harder than other ethnic groups in the USA. That is a fact. And anyone who denies it is not living in the real world. But there's another truth. And that is America offers more opportunity to black people than any other country on earth. I received a letter from Kendall Qualls, who lives in Erie, Colorado. I'm a black American with a master's degree from the University of Michigan. I paid for my education personally by working and taking loans. America is not only fair, but an inspiring place for the entire world. Here, you can build dreams. So why then do we hear so many other voices condemning America? Interesting question. Enter President Obama, perhaps the greatest African-American success story in history. But the president has largely avoided the racial issues that are now planted on page one. When basketball superstar LeBron James and other prominent African-Americans displayed disenchantment with the justice system, the president praised them. While honest dissent is a hallmark of our country, there's something missing here. And that something is perspective. Speaking on The Factor last week, Geraldo Rivera urged LeBron James and others to also wear T-shirts that say, be a good father to your son. Mr. Rivera, rightly focusing on the primary issue holding blacks back in America, chaotic families. It is certainly valid for President Obama to tell People magazine that he has experienced racism in his life. He and the First Lady tell stories about white folks talking down to them. I believe every single African-American has experienced that. So have most overweight Americans, most gay Americans. Most of us have been insulted and ridiculed by ignorant people. That is not the collective fault of the nation. It is the individual's failing. A bad decision by a grand jury, such as the one in the Eric Garner case, does not mean the entire justice system is rigged. Just as criminal behavior by some African-Americans doesn't mean all black citizens are bad. This simplistic condemnation of America by bitter people is dangerous, especially because the national media is too callow, too frightened to provide a balance. Here's a good example of what's in play. The actor Samuel L. Jackson is a tremendous American success story, yet he has jumped on the grievance train. I can hear my neighbor crying, I can't breathe. Now I'm in the struggle and I can't leave. Calling out the violence of the racist police. We ain't gonna stop till people are free. We ain't gonna stop till people are free. Come on, sing it out. Come on, come on the factor. Of course, Mr. Jackson will not do that. But let me tell you a bit about him. He was raised by his grandmother in Chattanooga, Tennessee. No father present, mother lived in another city. Jackson was poor, lived in an all black neighborhood, but he's very intelligent and eventually found his way to Morehouse College. There, he associated with some black militants and entered his quote, kill whitey period. Mr. Jackson was so radical the FBI actually investigated him back in the 1960s. Nevertheless, his talent proved out. I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know my name is the Lord. At this point, Samuel Jackson has made more than 100 films and is a very, very wealthy man. So with all due respect, rather than diminish his country, Mr. Jackson should be trying to make it better. His message could be that if I can succeed, so can you. Again, African Americans do have it much tougher than whites. It's true some cops don't like blacks. It's true historical injustice has affected the black experience in America. But this country now offers a pathway to success for everybody. And while injustice must be dealt with, the message of opportunity and America's basic nobility should be on the backside of every one of those I can't breathe t-shirts. And that's the memo.
Now for the top story tonight, reaction. Join us from Atlanta, Martin Luther King III, the eldest son of Martin Luther King Jr. Mr. King is a human rights activist. So where am I going wrong, Mr. King? Where are you going wrong? I, I'm, I'm not sure that I can say where you're going wrong. What I would say is that our nation does need to hear a unifying message that brings us together. Uh, in other words, the African-American community may not always suggest that it is constantly a victim, but while there are victim situations, you can, o you can overcome those situations and become successful. All right, and that's what I'm saying. Um, and that's what uh, one of the factor viewers from Colorado wrote in. But that's not what Samuel L. Jackson is saying. It's not what Al Sharpton is saying. And to some extent, it's not what President Obama is saying. See, I don't mind President Obama saying to LeBron James, hey, look, I'm with you. And that's what he did. But he also has to provide some leadership in the sense of saying just what you said, just exactly what you said. You know what? We fight the injustice and we realize it's there, but we love our country. We applaud the progress we've made, and here is a pathway to success. You know, don't abandon your children. Don't get pregnant at 14. Don't allow your neighborhoods to deteriorate into free fire zones. That's what the African-American community should have on their T-shirts. Am I wrong? Well, I, I think that's a part of it, but that's not the entirety. I do think that my dad said that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So unfortunately, right now, the nation is focused on one segment instead of the whole. I think we need to use this opportunity to not just focus on that one segment, but to focus on the whole so that you are, we are addressing those issues just as we're addressing instances of police misconduct. Okay. Do you think America is a noble nation? Oh, absolutely. Now, that's absolutely. interesting because your father was gunned down by a white racist, killed, his life taken. But yet you, his eldest son, still believe that America is a noble nation. So could you explain that, why you believe well, it? I, it not, not only do I believe it, I know it. I mean, all you got to do is look at whenever we're in, in, whenever there's a natural catastrophe, whether it's a tsunami or whether there is a hurricane or a tornado, Americans come running to help. That's who we are at heart. Unfortunately, once that catastrophe is over, we go back to our corners and live separately. I'm not suggesting we need to live in crisis all the time. What I am saying is when there's a crisis, we don't ask, well, are you a Democrat? Are you a Republican? Are you gay? Are you straight? Are you black? Are you white? We come ready to help. That's no, we what saw that are. in 9-11 after 9-11. But now, absolutely, 12 years later, we're seeing demonstrators in the streets of New York saying, kill the cops. We're seeing looting in Missouri, primarily by African Americans. We're seeing commentators saying the worst possible inflammatory stuff about their country, and an actor who is well-respected in the black community, Samuel L. Jackson, singing that stupid song that basically indicts all American law enforcement and, uh, you know, puts forth that, you know, we are living in a, uh, in a South African apartheid situation. And it's really insulting, I think. I think it's just insulting. Well, I would say that, unfortunately, many African Americans, and particularly young people, do feel that way, that because they are targeted every day. And that doesn't mean that others who don't have that experience are bad people. Your experience has been different. I don't, I, or certainly you, my experience has been different. But by and large, young people seem to feel they are targeted by the police. They have and an issue with authority. they are. And to some extent, yes. they are. Yes. Because the astronomical yes, crime rates on the south side of Chicago or Beverly Stuyvesant here in New York City or uh, South Central in Los Angeles mean that the zone is going to be flooded by police officers protecting the law abiding blacks who live there. And guys hanging out on the corner are going to be targeted. They're going to be questioned. And, and some of these police don't like them. And, and that's a reality. But that's not the whole country. And if the crime rate could drop in these, in these places, then you would see a, a lifting of that, I believe. And I, and, you know, and, and sir, go ahead. Go I ahead. was going to say, certainly that can happen, but somehow opportunity has to come to those areas that are excluded. Uh, and, you know, you can say, okay, well, educate yourself, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. Those are great concepts, but when you have no boots, it's very challenging to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. But the only way the opportunity is going to come is not from Bill O'Reilly, a white guy from a white suburb of Levittown, working class. I can't provide it. The community itself has to provide it. The south side of Chicago has to say enough. 
They have to rise up like your father implored people. Rise up. Be and dignified. I Speak out for positive change, not kill the cops. Last word. Well, first of all, that is counterproductive and destructive. There's no, I don't believe that the masses of demonstrators are talking about kill the cops. There may be some, but that would be, that, that's insanity. We do need all hands on deck. Americans coming forward saying, look, there's a problem. There's no problem we can't address when we bring ourselves together, using our minds, our hearts, and being open. I we are a that. great nation. All right, Mr. King. Anytime you want to come on the program, you are welcome. Thanks for taking the Thank time. Thank you tonight. for the opportunity. Merry Christmas to you. Next on the rundown.